So you're interested in a BMW E30, so I'm going to go over a few things here that uh, you should probably know before you buy one. I get this video requested a lot uh, by a lot of different people and to be truthful I never really wanted to make it because I didn't feel that I was very versed on E30s and I still don't really think I am the best person to make this video. I know a lot more about E34s and whatnot, but I figured I've owned it long enough um, and just buying BMWs enough things kind of you know are the same between models to where I feel like I could probably give you guys some decent info so I don't know exactly how many things I'm gonna go over right now because I'm just gonna kind of go as I look around it but uh things to know about an E30 so here we have my 1989 325i and you'll know right away if you're not familiar with the channel it's clearly not stock and I'll pop the hood for you guys it's also not stock under the hood so at the end of the day really this video um, I'm gonna have to really kind of make up a lot of stuff because my model now will not apply to what you will be buying, but still, it's helpful. So my E30 doesn't have an M20 anymore. You can see here, we got an M50 swap in this thing. I'm still gonna go over all the M20 stuff, and honestly, between the two, a lot of it's the same. But yeah, this is M50 swapped on air suspension, not on stock wheels. A lot of this stuff is uh, modified, but at the end of the day, an E30 is an E30, and I can still inform you guys everything you should know about this before buying the car. So the first thing, when you're going to buy an E30, right, you're going to look at the body. Uh, the one thing you should know about this car is the rust spots and all that kind of stuff. So these cars, unlike the E34s, don't have that stupid lower door trim. So the lower doors on these cars are less susceptible to rusting, but the rocker panels will still rust. So you can see right there, rocker rust, a little bit at the bottom of this fender. You want to watch out for those spots. Quarter panel rust, this I believe is a little bit of Bondo, so that's why that is there. But at the end of the day, any BMW, these arches, if they're not taken care of or cleaned up, they will rust. So the one thing about the E30s that is kind of uh, peculiar as, a, uh, as opposed to other models is the fact that the rear bumper, at least on the later models, early models are a little bit different, but I think still kind of the same. You got this, like this is your bumper. This is like metal part of the frame. Under this bumper, as you can see, susceptible to rust because dirt gets in there you can't really wash it you can see I got some bubbles and by the way this is gonna be all the flaws on my car so I'm informing you guys about buying one of these while exposing myself my E30 is not the cleanest I'm not ashamed to admit that so yeah under these bumpers will rust pretty badly so you definitely want to take a peek there you know always want to do the rockers you always want to check the frame rails as opposed or as aside from that the trunks aren't really that bad like E36's uh, gas doors you want to check those out inside the doors you know you could always check here and stuff but as far as e30s go i haven't seen a ton of them and that's again why i said it wasn't crazy about making this video because i don't go out and buy 40 e30 e30s i have owned a lot of these i know exactly what to look for you know e30s some might be really bad some might be good i think mine is decent so i think some places could get worse which is why i don't have a perfect idea of everywhere but definitely want to check under these weird bumpers the metal parts underneath so once you go around the body and you make sure the chassis is kind of where you want it, then uh, let's say you go ahead and check out the interior. So you go in the interior and uh, driver's seat might be worn. I don't know, these wear easier than uh, the other leathers in BMWs, but the door cards might be falling off. They're all pretty solid in this car. Aside from that, you're going to be looking at your dash crack. E30's dashes crack like crazy. You see mine's actually pretty good. It for some reason has holes in it. You won't have that. I don't know what that's all about. But I do have a little bit of cracking starting there. You can see it gets a little ugly. So you're going to want to make sure that your dash is not cracked if it bothers you. Again, it's not really a huge thing, but um, it's possible. Another thing about E30's is your odometer. E30's are prone to the odometer failure. So when you go to buy one, don't trust what the guy says mileage-wise. When you go on the test drive, if it drives, see if it's clicking over mine does not mine has been stuck at 162 for god knows how long so i mean you could have someone whose odometer stopped at 80k and they tell you it's got 80,000 on it and it's got you know 300,000 so you're gonna want to definitely check out for those odometer gears see if they work the fix for that i believe is odometergears.com or whatever has the gears to fix that uh temp gauges go bad my temp gauge is bad on this car that is usually the si board so then you're gonna need to kind of get your whole cluster rebuilt at that point to fix that that's kind of the same issue um so that's basically cluster problems to worry about otherwise interior just make sure it's what you want it to be i mean it's not you know people always ask things to look out for uh interior is the, probably the last thing to, that I, I could help you guys with just because it's what your what your tolerance is to wear and stuff if you need mint seats 
make sure it's got mint seats. If you need a crack free dash, make sure it's got crack free dash. You know, interior plastics and vents, check control. Mine's a little busted up. Um, well, this is the check control, but this is, um, you know, whatever. That makes sure that's not busted up. Blower motor, make sure that works. Um, all this other stuff, you know, shifter, all this. You can see they wear here pretty bad, apparently. Uh, aside from that, rear seat's not bad. Rear deck doesn't have any issues. But that's pretty much as far as I could give you guys interior tips. So then you're going to be left with what is arguably the most important part, but not really. I would say the most important thing is the chassis. That's the hardest to do work on. Rust repair, paint repair, uh, damage. You can see mine right here has uh, this goofy dent damage. Probably from airing it out since on air suspension from the previous owner. Not really sure, but... Uh, the chassis itself is, uh, you know, what you're paying for. Engines are easy to come by. I don't want to say easy anymore because actually it's, things are kind of aren't what they used to be. But regardless, you could always swap an engine on one of these cars. But still, at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're getting the right one. So I'm going to tell you guys about that. So again, you will not have this motor. You will have an M20 or a M40, M42, something like that. I'm not going to talk about the 318s. I got no clue about them. But for the M20, it's a very robust motor, right? So you want to turn it on and you'll instantly know if you have issues. If it's really noisy, M20s sound like sewing machines, so don't let that scare you. That's just the lifters and the valves at the valve train. They're very noisy, um, similar to an M30 if you've ever had an M30 car. But as long as you don't have any weird ticking or tapping or knocking from underneath at the bottom, you should be fine. Valve adjustments, you definitely wanna do. But other than that, it's pretty robust. It's really hard to kill one unless it's like this car and you have rod knock from a cracked oil pan and running it with no oil. Otherwise, it should be pretty good. But what you're gonna wanna check out in an M20, uh, and it's not really easy to check when you're there, but what you're gonna wanna do when you first get it, do the timing belt because they're belts, not chains like the M50s, M30s, etc. So you wanna make sure that your timing belt's in good condition and if it doesn't have any service history, I would just go ahead and do it because you do not wanna snap a timing belt. That's also how you kill an M20 pretty easily. Probably the most important thing that you want to check for and look for on one of these cars when you go to start it, when you're buying it, is you want to get it up to operating temperature and you want to make sure that it stays at operating temperature because the another big thing on these cars, water pumps, thermostats, radiators, if it overheats, that's the soonest, quickest, easiest way to kill one of these motors, blow your head gasket. So you want to make sure it holds temp. That's probably the most important thing. A lot of people ask me, what do I look for on this motor? What do I look for on that motor? When I buy cars, I'm a little less concerned about all these things because I know motor swap is a motor swap. Components are easy enough to replace, so if you're unsure, do them. But as far as when I'm going to buy a BMW, I just make sure it's not overheating. If it's not overheating, it doesn't make any crazy noises, your M20 should be fine. Then you want to go through the gears, make sure it gets into all the gears, make sure the trans isn't noisy. G260s are pretty quiet they're not like a loud crazy you know anything special about them uh, aside from that then take it for a drive check your bushings all that stuff you'll know a blown you know CSB Guibo you'll know a bad diff bushings you get some diff clunk subframe bushings kind of harder to kind of diagnose you know tie rods control arms all that stuff in the world it's all easy to do it's all a good fun learning process so I wouldn't really let that deter you from buying a car or not buying a car. So now let's talk about the most important two things that you should know when buying an E30. These are a little bit less uh, things to look for, things that I think you should know before you go down the E30 road. These are things that I've learned my E30 ownership after I've owned many other models of BMW. Old, not really new, but you know, E34s, E32s, E24s, E28s, E12s. You name it. So the one thing I know is about E30s that you should know. They are probably the most tin can BMW on the road. I would probably put an E36 as a close second. But the E30s are noisy. They don't have great sound deadening. And there's overall lots of road noise and stuff like that. I'm going to go into this when I do a comparison between the E34 and the E30. So I'm not going to spoil that part of it. And I know uh, Stash Cam, if you're watching this, I just watched his video. Uh, this has been in my mind before I even watched that video. It's just crazy that we agreed. He's an E34 guy, I'm an E34 guy. E34s are really, really solid. They're quiet to drive. This car, if you're not familiar with my channel, is uh, boosted, solid everything. I'll get in this, and I'll get in this thing, and this thing will be 30 times noisier, rattlier, uh, vibrating. So, the one thing about this E30, again, with the swap, it's on solid mounts, uh, solid engine, 
and uh, really stiff poly trans. And I got a lightweight single mass flywheel. That car also has a lightweight uh, single mass dual diaphragm flywheel. They're both set up very harshly, but I'm not gonna go over to that car because that's gonna be another video. But just let me turn this thing on and let me just give you guys kind of some noise, some ASMR you can say. Let's see if she makes any noise. So I'm sure this will not come up on camera, but we're getting rattles from around here. Oh, and it just airs up random. The sunroof likes to rattle on this car. Uh, the cluster likes to rattle. The plastics here like to rattle. You can see these are just kind of uh, weak. Trans noise is insane. You can't see it or hear it in camera, but if you're in the car, you can feel it. You feel the vibrations from the trans tunnel uh, on everything, on the shifter, on the seats, on my butt. You definitely hear that now the air's not gonna shut up. All right, hold on, let's wait. Now that the air finally decides to shut up, let's just listen for a second. Maybe you guys can hear this stuff, probably not, but let's listen. So maybe you guys hear that, maybe you don't, but take my word for it, all I hear right now are rattles. Very minor, uh, or I guess maybe say vibrations, not rattles. Everything in here vibrates. The dash stuff, up in the pillars, the sunroof, the seats, it's all vibrating and you can hear it for sure. E34, I rarely ever hear anything like that. The E36 rattles pretty good, but yeah, E34 on solid mounts, same amounts as this car but even more solid trans and it's much quieter inside. So you need to know, well, and the road noise. That's another thing. I could go for a spin right now, but just take my word for it. The road, no, we'll go for a spin. The road noise is kind of crazy on this car. You hear a lot of wind, you hear a lot of road, just kind of the way of uh, what a cheaper entry level car. Cause that's what you gotta think about. At the end of the day, it's an entry level BMW, so it's cheaper. So I'm gonna shut up for a little bit and just let you guys listen. There's that sunroof rattle I was talking about. So hopefully the exhaust doesn't overdo this, but especially if you're on stiffer suspension and not stock, you're gonna get rattles and you're gonna get road noise. I'm gonna try to get up to speed here. So that wasn't the most helpful, I'm sure, but just take my word for it. The E30s are kind of like tin cans. They're fun, but if you're looking for that luxury, you know, not like I'm an E34 salesman or anything, but E34 is probably a much better, more comfortable bet. Again, I haven't really compared a stock E30. This is a heavily modified E30. But at the end of the day, they are more tin canny. Christian Lewis can confirm, Stash Cam. I'm sure a lot of people out there can confirm. That's just something you guys should know. And aside from that, another very important thing you need to know is that if you're looking for an E30, you're probably gonna overpay because E30s are one of the most hyped BMWs. Uh, and I don't wanna say this like a hater or anything like that. I love this E30, but just the hype that these things have is just kinda nuts. They are. Again, don't want to, you know, sound, you know, bashing, like I'm bashing or anything. I love the car. I like them. Uh, I think they're just better looking, better performing, better uh, comfort, better everything BMWs out there for a more bang for your buck price. For example, the E30 has skyrocketed far past the E34 in terms of prices. It's just because these are hype. There's a lot of pop culture on E30s. There's a lot of celebrities with E30s. 
you know, music artists, all that stuff. The E3 M3 rightfully deserves its hype, but um, if it's not an M3, and even then you're overpaying just because it's a, it's a slow, ancient sports car. Obviously, it's a cool museum piece that I would love to have one, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be overpaying because these things now, even the four banger ones, are going for seven, eight, nine grand. Uh, you're getting clean 325s above, you know, 10, 12, 13. Days of just buying a cheap one, not running, whatever it may be, are just pretty much gone. I got this thing for a pretty good deal. You guys seen around it, it's not the cleanest, but yeah, uh, if you want a clean one, you're gonna be paying a lot just because it's an E30. So that is just something very important that I think everyone should know. Uh, just kind of from my BMW guy uh, knowledge and, and uh, track record compared to all the other models, I think there's a lot more bang for your buck in terms of what you can get certain models for and stuff. But it's, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about prices. There's nothing you can do about prices. We kind of just got to live in the world we live in. So uh, we'll see. But aside from that, uh, I think, I don't know, I think I covered kind of everything I wanted to. I thought there would be more to this. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Uh, I hope this helps some people. But this is just kind of my, you know, thoughts buying an E30. Things that you should know, look out for, blah, blah, blah. Great car, a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy this car. The M50 makes it ten times more badass. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you want an E30, good luck finding one. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know if you want to see, you know, E36, E34, things to look out for for those cars, whatnot. I'll see you in the next one.